Episode four is about to go down. This is the episode where we install a ultimate CVT kit on our GY6 fire breathing freaking dragon. This is a 232 cc, nearly 30 horsepower, almost 100 mile per hour motor. This thing's cray cray. And one of the main reasons why we have these high horsepower numbers is because of our ultimate CVT kit. It comes with a non-traditional, super lightweight Ravino clutch. It also comes with our Pro Build Ravino Variator, 842-2030 Kevlar belt, TFC lightweight drive pulley. The whole thing's way, way lighter than any stock GY6 or any aftermarket GY6 stuff that you've seen outside of Ravino. And I'm gonna install that in this episode. If you haven't watched episode one, two, and three, make sure you go back, it'll set you straight. We've done a lot. We've prepped the cases, installed the final drive gears, did rear disc brake kits, installed the crankshaft, and now we're installing our ultimate CVT kit. We'll also be installing an engine case brace and ankle biter. It's not only gonna look sweet, but it's gonna protect your freaking life. If you don't install an engine case brace, your engine could possibly break in half if you hit a big pothole or anything that effect. Your rear wheel goes this way, front wheel that way. It's not gonna end well. We install those on every engine we do and it looks super sweet when you're putting it on a ruckus with the open belt drive. Let's freaking do it. This is our Pro Build Variator. Comes with 10, 11, and 12 gram Variator rollers, not sliders, but I put 14 gram in here because this is a 232. Might even do up to 16 gram, but 14 is what I like with the testing I've done. We got our dry face, 842 2030 belt, TFC lightweight forge pulley. We got our spring bearing, spring bearing, it sounds made up. Uh, that's going to just go over the top like that. And then the spring's not meant to push and turn at the same time. These little pulleys, they come up and turn like this. And we've got our Ravino 1.0 clutch. These are the best of the best clutches. We've got our starter gear that just goes back here and it serves as a spacer. Then we've got our backing plate, ankle biter, and this guy is the case brace. So you don't crack your case. If you're not running a kickstart cover, it's very risky and it could crack down the middle. And if that happens, this will save you. I've got all the spacers and bolts and all that. Titanium clutch bolt and titanium variator bolt. Let's freaking put this on, sweet. Very important that you know this. This is the kickstart gear, which I'm gonna make in titanium because these things are really heavy, just adds mass to all this, but you need this. This is a must. It's used for a spacer. If you don't use it, you're gonna have problems. So there's that. Now we're gonna just use this, this backing plate. I've got these uh, screws just halfway started. This is just gonna stay there for just a second while I put all this together. We're, we're not gonna be doing any Loctite or anything like that yet. This is an older version of the engine stand. And notice I can't put this last bolt in here, this guy, because it's in the way. New version, no problem. So I'm just gonna keep it like that for now because every one of these is gonna get a spacer, just like what I installed. This will go over the top like that, but not until we put the belt on and all that. But this has to go on there first so that it's held up and the belt can be installed and so on. You get it. This is the world's best TFC pulley. It's forged. It won't wobble like the steel pulleys and they're, they're super light. They're 31% lighter than a steel pulley. One other thing, I just kind of briefly went over. It's got bearings in it. You used to have to, you buy the race and then you have to put like 200 bearings in there without them falling off and going everywhere. This is a sealed unit. So we'll slap that there. I'm gonna use red Loctite on here. Here is our Ravino clutch. These things work a lot like a variator where they spin, the, the rollers roll out and lock the clutch in. Kind of like a motorcycle clutch in a way, but using like variator technology, I guess. Or if you know what a recluse clutch looks like, similar to that. So there's that. By the way, lightest, best clutch on the freaking planet. We're the United States distributor, only because we freaking love these clutches. Actually, we're going to Milan, Italy to meet Ravino this week, I'm excited about. They're from Taiwan. We're doing that ICMA show. So if you notice, I'll take this off really quick so you understand what's going on. 
When I push this down, I'm gonna push this down and then hold this with my feet. They've got special tools for this, but it's the easiest way, just do it with your feet. It's gonna look like that, springs in there, imagine. While I'm holding it down, notice how this uh, nut flares up. You want it to flare up and you gotta tighten it down like that. I highly recommend putting a rag over the nut. This is a clutch pulley socket. It's a, let's see, four, it's a size 33 and a 41 on both sides. So it's way, way cheaper to buy this than go to any like auto zone or anything like that. But when you crank it down with the impact, you don't want to mess up the finish of the clutch. So don't do that. Don't forget the little cover so you don't mess up the aluminum, it's steel. And I still have that stuck on there. So do this off cam. Okay, variator. I just like to hold it like that. Slide it on real easy. That'll just stay like that. Now we gotta get our clutch on with the belt. Okay, now we gotta get our belt on there. And the way I do that is I push down, I'll put it on the floor and squeeze like that. And with the other hand, put the belt down in there. I'll do that really quick and then you'll see me come up and put it on there quickly. Okay, like that. Slide it in, I'm holding it down until I get it in there. Okay, there we go. See all these little clutches? See that sucker? Those little teeth? Those have gotta be lined up. You don't wanna put it, up, put it in and crank down and bust one of those clutch plates. There we go. It's pretty obvious when you get it. See how good that looks? Put a little red Loctite on there. Put our titanium washer, titanium nut. And then over on this side, this guy, well, see what I do is I squeeze the belt down like this. That way the belt can be kind of pushed out. We can do all that maneuver. The, the point I'm trying to make is you don't want to crank down this belt and squeeze it between there. So let me do that, crank it down. Oh, I better put some red Loctite on there really quick. I'm gonna need that. Get my washer ready. So squeeze it down like that, making enough room for the belt. Hold it down so it doesn't slide into place. Get these started by hand. There we go. Now I'm gonna crank those down. Gosh, that's looking nice, isn't it? Okay, 17 millimeter, I'm gonna hold the other side. Okay, now this one, this one's a little harder. Gotta hold the uh, shaft over on that side, the hub. Perfect. The thing about these clutches is they do rattle. They make a little rattling noise. You can kind of hear it. They'll make a rattling noise, but sweet, huh? Look at that, damn. Next is our case brace. This is a little bit difficult to put on to try to get it to fit right. Just have to be careful not to scratch anything. Oh, you know what? I need to actually undo this bolt. Do that, go down like that. And then just this just swivels over the top like that. And then down on the bottom, this guy bolts right up like that. So let's get the top secured and we'll bolt the bottom. Okay, so we got this top piece on. I ran the brake line underneath it. Then we've got this guy. This is the bottom piece. If you notice, there's a little cutout for draining the gear oil, which is awesome. So this is just gonna bolt up like that. I'll have to remove this one. Those are five millimeters. All of the um, bolts with the spacers behind it are five millimeters. The bolts that hold these two uh, case braces together, that one's actually American, five thirty seconds. You're just gonna get these started. You're not gonna uh, crank them down. So I'm just putting them in so that they're just barely in. And by the way, I put red Loctite on these threads. Then I'm gonna come around. We've got this guy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unscrew this one. I'll have to put a little bit of Loctite on the top. I'm using red Loctite on these all of these bolts, these notoriously come loose. Even though they have red Loctite, you're gonna want to check them, that is for sure. So these are the really long bolts. These back bolts are the really long bolts. Okay, that's started. Back to this side. The ones that were already screwed didn't, didn't have Loctite on them, so going around and doing that. So I'm gonna be able to put all of these in except for this one right here. I'll have to do it at the very end. See, I shouldn't have tightened that one down. I said don't torque them down, just get them started. Because you gotta have all that room to be able to put these in. I'll do that and we'll come back. Okay, all of them are tight, We're missing this guy. Actually, this one, for some mysterious reason, needs a longer screw because this one keeps spinning, so 
Gonna need to do that. But down here, this is our last step, is getting these tight. So let's go ahead and do that. I made a giant <laughs> mistake. I was supposed to put the starter in first. Don't do what I did because these case braces, you can't get to that bolt very easy. I could still do it, it's just not gonna be very easy. So I'm just gonna slide it in at an angle like that. And then see, I gotta bolt it in all ghetto-like. Try to get a wrench through there. That's what I'm gonna do. But that's our four pole 232 starter. Heavy, heavy duty starter. I'm just gonna put some uh, grease on this O-ring so it slides in nice. I can at least torque that one down. This one I'm gonna struggle with, unless I wanna take all this apart, which I don't. I'm gonna do it and we'll be right back. Got it, wasn't easy. Did it with some needle nose, got it started. Put an open end wrench in there. That one, that one is easy, but those. All ready to go. Bottom end is done, except for this bolt and that bolt when we take that out. But the rear disc brake kit, the CVT transmission, the uh, 18 pole stator, high torque starter. The only thing left now is the top end. Man, I love building these things. Building is almost as fun as riding. Episode four has come to an end, but episode five is on its way. See you in the next episode where we are gonna install that top end on that 232 fire breathing freaking monster. Now, this is probably something you wanna learn. It doesn't matter if you have 125 cc, 232, 180, 190, any of those engine sizes, it's all gonna be the same concept when we install that top end. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for that. And if you guys want to watch this whole series without the episodes, without the ads, we do have a membership side of YouTube. Next to the subscribe button, there's a join button on a desktop computer. That'll enter you into our DIY video library. There's about 80 videos that you haven't seen on public YouTube here in that library. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>